So the International Space Station, of course, is a multidisciplinary laboratory, a number of different uh, scientific experiments going on at any one time. And in the field of cell biology, researchers are looking for something called gene expression information. It's going to unlock a lot of opportunities for them. And there's a new piece of hardware being tested right now on board the station that's going to give it to them. Today I'm joined by Dr. Makarana Para from the Ames Research Center. She's one of the project scientists for Wet Lab 2. And first off, thank you so much for joining me. And if you could start us off, what exactly is gene expression? And you know, why is this, how, or how do we typically collect this on board the International Space Station? So uh, I think everybody knows that like your genetic information tells you the color of your eyes and the color of your hair. But what also is encoded in your genetic information is, for example, how you react to your environment. And one good way to, a couple of examples I'm gonna use is, if we're sick, we have uh, systems that help us fight the disease, or if we're stressed, we have systems that help us fight the, those distress. So uh, what, what genetic, what gene expression is, is if you're healthy, you obviously don't want to be fighting a disease you don't have. And so you need to know when to turn on that machinery and when not to turn on that machinery. And that's what gene expression is. And so scientists learn a lot about it, about how any organism is reacting to its environment by understanding which genes are being expressed, which machineries are turned on and which genes are not being expressed. And one of the ways uh, scientists do this is by a technique called quantitative PCR. And what it does is it actually allows the scientists to understand how much a specific piece of the machinery, the proteins, how much of it is being made, how, how, how much they're turned on and how much they're turned off. So uh, that's what we refer to when we refer to gene expression. And up until now, a lot of this has had to be collected by samples that are returned back down to Earth first. So why is that not ideal? Why are we looking to get this information right there on board the station? So uh, there's a number of reasons why that's not ideal, and probably the most, the one that affects absolutely everybody is time, which means that you need to wait sometimes weeks, sometimes months to get your, your samples down and be able to get the information. And then if you wish you had done something a little differently, you need to, you need to essentially wait until you can get to fly the, the experiment again. Um, so that's, that's one that affects everybody. But then there's also, uh, in order to understand gene expression, you deal with something called ribonucleic acid or RNA, and it's very unstable. And so uh, no matter how much you try to preserve it, there's always a possibility that it could be uh, essentially breaking down over time. And without without knowing how well you've done a job preserving it, without having a control of how it looks like on orbit, it's hard to tell whether or not uh, you've done a good job of preserving it and how much you can trust your results on the ground. Um, so those are two uh, pretty large reasons as to why doing the analysis on orbit is, is preferred. And so I imagine that's where the wet lab RNA smart cycler is going to come in. How is it going to do its job on board the station? How are the crew members going to be interacting with it there on board the station? So uh, the idea of the wet lab 2 system is to allow a crew member to sample from whatever the researcher is studying. Let's just say it's, it's a bacteria. And then to be able to take that sample and put it into our system, and our system actually extracts the ribonucleic acid that I spoke about earlier, and allows you to allows the crew member really to add that that purified ribonucleic acid to tubes, which then do the analysis, the, the qPCR analysis that I explained earlier, so that the results are now essentially just an Excel file that can be given to the to the researcher when when the uh, analysis is complete. So, I mean, we're essentially transferring a lot of this analysis work from the ground and then just doing it right there on site on board the International Space Station. That's pretty cool. That is, yeah, that's the idea, yeah. And so clearly a very exciting new piece of technology. What is this going to unlock in the future for cell biologists looking to do their research on board the International Space Station? So, so again, there's a, there's a number of benefits that, that can come of this. And one of them is the, the, the first... Uh, the first problem I told you about, which is time. And mm -hmm. now researchers will get their information a lot earlier than they could have possibly done so before. But also it allows us to start actually using the International Space Station as a lab rather than as what we like to call an exposure facility, where you used to have to package your organism, up it goes, it gets exposed to microgravity, down it comes, and now you find out how it did. And instead of doing that, we're now not only exposing it, but we're also getting the information. and 
if a researcher was to plan to do, say, two or three subsequent runs of an experiment, they would have the information from the first run, and then they could change parameters for their second and third run so that they can actually do the equivalent of what now has to be three separate flights, but all in one flight, which is financially better, time-wise better, and really a, a, an advance for research in general. All right. Well, again, Dr. Macarena Parra from the Ames Research Center talking to us about the wet lab RNA smart cycler coming to a space station near you, looking to get that gene expression information to scientists. We're really excited to see what this is going to unlock in the future. Thank you so much for joining me today. We really appreciate your time. Thank you.